Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Non-Monogamy Help. I'm Lola Phoenix. Non-Monogamy Help is a relationships advice podcast for people in non-monogamous, polyamorous, and open relationships that comes out every other week. Um, You can send your letters to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be in the podcast or the column. You can indicate if you really, really want to. Um, And they will be hosted anonymously. If you haven't heard already, you can read the columns, because it's also a column, if you didn't already know, um, at medium.com forward slash non hyphen monogamy hyphen help. If you want to get them in your inbox because you don't go on medium or you don't pay attention and you want it in your inbox so it's easier, you can subscribe at tinyletter.com forward slash non monogamy help no hyphens and if you want to be an amazing super awesome person and get it get the columns and the podcast way before everyone else and support everything that we do um everything i do actually there's no we i say we it's the royal we um (laughs) you can become a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix um even one dollar a month is super amazing i appreciate it all um and if you just want to get general updates or be constantly bothered about whatever podcast or column is out, you can go to twitter.com forward slash nominogamy help, um, no hyphens, and I'll generally bother you there as well. So, awesome. Let's get to this week's letter. Exciting. I was basically Googling all night long with anxiety and insomnia with my son and partner in bed soundly sleeping next to me. My partner basically told me, not for the first time, that he desires to have sexual relations with other women. Actually, he said that he wants to get to know other people and he sees sex as a way to do this. He basically wants to explore. Here's some background on our story. We met on an online dating site about four years ago. He approached me. I had set an age interest range. um, I had set age interest in a range he was not in. So he did not come up on my feed of potential candidates, but I came up on his. I was looking for someone between 35 to 45. He was 26 at the time and I was 39. I had set my age range this way because my previous relationship was with a younger man and it didn't really end well, so I was not looking to repeat this experience. However, when he contacted me, he was intelligent and piqued my curiosity. We agreed to meet a week or so later, and on the first date, I honestly wasn't really interested in pursuing the relationship, but in the end, it convinced me otherwise because we did continue to see each other. We ended up having a great sexual connection and continued to see each other over the course of six months until I got pregnant. I always wanted to have a child, but it was never the right moment or the right person. I had never gotten pregnant before and honestly wasn't sure I was fertile. We had spoken about this over the course of the six months together, and perhaps you could even go so far as to say that we unconsciously tempted fate on purpose. Early on, he expressed his desire to explore his sexuality coming from a conservative, religious, and sexually repressive background, and it triggered me then, but I kept telling myself that we were living that we were living where we were living (laughs) was momentary and would not last because of age difference. However, I got pregnant and this ended up changing everything. Except, as was confirmed last night, his desire to explore sexuality is very much alive in him. He has mentioned it to me a few times over the past four years, but usually when we are having a disagreement or difficulty communicating. He is a man of few words and generally does not appear comfortable talking about his feelings, either because he is not in contact with them and he has trouble identifying them or because it is too difficult, but I suspect it is more the first point. I must say that he is a great father and and his son loves him very much. He is also a great provider for us as a family. As a partner, it is not easy to communicate with him, though, and I believe that this is our main challenge, although it is getting better. He is also a major introvert, and I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I'm a highly social person with with high sensitivity and desire to connect and communicate. As I'm sure you have already deduced, I am not comfortable with his need to explore. However, I'm trying to be as respectful and as honest at the same time as digesting the difficult feelings it is bringing up in me. Another important detail to mention is that when I announced I was pregnant initially, neither of us really knew what we were going to do as a couple or if we would even remain one, but we both knew that we wanted to be a parent to our baby. 
He had already planned to leave the city and had a set date. I did not want to stand in his way. I think we both agreed that we needed time to figure things out as well. So technically we were still together. However, I suspected that he would perhaps he would be perhaps meeting other women while away, but never asked. He came back as planned two months later, and we were happy to find each other. He moved into my place, and we focused on the arrival of our baby. It was only several months later, after giving birth, that we spoke about what happened while he was away for those two months, and I discovered that he had, in fact... He had, in fact, been involved in three separate one-night stands. He told me that they didn't fulfill him, and he was happy to find me again. The news didn't surprise me, but it saddened me, especially thinking back to the fact I was carrying his baby at the time. Even if I rationalized that he was young, lacked experiences, and that we really didn't know what we wanted when he left in the first place. However, last night's honesty session has visibly rattled me. I am not a sufferer of insomnia, and the fact that I wasn't able to sleep at all just reveals how much I am shaken. It has really brought up all kinds of feelings. Some I can identify, some I am still struggling to identify. Fear of our life being together being destroyed fear of losing him frustration that he needs this anger sadness fear that if he chooses to say he will resent me fear that if he leaves the life we have built will no longer exist he just woke up to go to work and saw me standing in the kitchen and i just admitted that i hadn't slept all, slept all night because of this with tears running down my cheeks he hugged me hard and said he loved me and i said i'm afraid that we're going to destroy our life together he promised me he he promised me it wouldn't, but can he make this promise? I don't know. I also told him that I think we need to see a couple's therapist for help. I sincerely hope he agrees. In the past, he has told me he doesn't agree with the idea of therapy, but I have a feeling he sees that we need help sorting through this complicated issue. And then the letter writer also added this bit. I also forgot to mention that after the birth of our baby, we had a sexual dry spell, which didn't alarm either of us, but that we actually still have a good and healthy sexual relationship. We're still attracted to each other. The only issue is making time with our toddler. We manage this by sending him to his grandparents on a fairly regular basis, which he loves, and it gives us a whole weekend to reconnect. He said something to me I just I, that I didn't that I don't understand. In fact, the announcement is made he made to me last night about wanting sexual freedom to explore came after sharing a powerful sexual and loving connection this weekend. And what puzzles me even more is that having sex with me doesn't make him desire freedom less, but actually heightens his desire for more sexual freedom. I must admit, it confuses me. Um, yeah. So there's a few things here um, that I would address. I think, first of all, the thing that I want to clarify, and, and this isn't... Um, it's an understandable kind of mistake um, or kind of c confusion that I think people have around introversion. Um, being introverted literally just means that you, um, in order to recharge, you need to be away from people. It doesn't mean that you're shy. It doesn't mean that you don't talk. It doesn't mean that you dislike being around people. Um, there are probably a lot of introverts who don't like being around people and who are shy and, and prefer quieter places, but in and of itself, being an introvert just literally means that you, um, when you need to recharge away from people, whereas being an extrovert means that you, you recharge by being around people. So that's all that means. Being an introvert shouldn't have anything to do with his ability to communicate, which is the biggest, first huge stumbling block that you're going to have in all this, regardless of what happens or, or the feelings going on. He needs to be able to communicate. And I feel like it's hard to tell from your letter whether whether or not he is genuinely interested in communicating and finds it difficult or if he is just out and out refusing to communicate because those are different like I can understand you know even my I myself the thing I struggle with a lot is actually like telling people when I'm upset um, I have a really hard time with healthy confrontation I have a really hard time feeling that telling someone that I'm upset about something is going to elicit a supportive and happy response so I have a really hard time with that but I try I I do and I want to try and I ha I show a willingness to change that I don't know it's it, I don't see you saying he out and out refuses but it's you know his comments about therapy are also really concerning because I do think that you you need to find a non-monogamy friendly couples therapist who can kind of walk you through this but you cannot like there's so much effort you're putting into this like you're you're psychoanalyzing him is why is he hard having such a hard time communicating I think you know da, 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 da. and it's not to say that's a bad thing about you but it's like you're putting all this effort in to understand him um, and, and what's going on inside his mind? Is he putting that same effort into understanding you? And I mean, maybe he is and he's just not communicating that, but we can't read minds. So he's going to have to learn how to communicate, especially if he wants to do non-monogamy. Um, it's not to say that monogamous people don't need to communicate because they do. It's, it's important in any kind of relationship. But I think that when you're tackling a lot of tricky feelings, 
it's 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 you know unless there are also situations in in monogamy that i think you know can be tricky such as having a child any major life change is is a huge thing and you need to be able to communicate so i think that that's my biggest that's like the first thing that kind of has to be tackled and has to be dealt with like definitely pursue the therapist option because i do think you need to like have some space to talk to each other and and, you know i've been in situations in relationships where i've been been with people who were people of few words um and who didn't communicate and then when we went to therapy they did open up a bit and that was somewhat helpful but another big thing that that's really important is he needs to be willing to do therapy just as much as you like it's so hard and i see so many situations where like there are clear and obvious problems not just with communication but with everything else like he needs to be as willing to go to therapy and find a better way to communicate with you as he is about exploring his sexuality like the 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 enthusiasm on those two things needs to be equal if they're not equal then you're gonna get frustrated i would get frustrated like if I've been in situations, like I said, where somebody was great communicating with, in, in couples therapy, but didn't have enough enthusiasm to continue the therapy. And I was going to be the one who pushed them into therapy constantly. And it's really, really sucky. Like you cannot fix everything. And you also like any situation where you are shoving someone into therapy, um, it's just not going to help because therapy only works if somebody really wants, it, you know, w- is willing to work at it, you know, like any job, you know, it works better when people want to do it. I mean, I guess I shouldn't compare it to a job, but you know, it, 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 it's not going to work if you're dragging him along basically. So he needs to step up and you need to like pay attention to that and not excuse his behavior. Like you're excusing his behavior a tiny bit, like, oh, he's young and he da 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 da. Um, and yeah, like, you know, there are certain situations in our lives, like, you know, growing up in a repressive family, um, not getting a lot of experience and then, you know, being younger than you that are going to make you have different feelings about things and that's fine but there isn't him being younger should not stop or curb his enthusiasm for fixing the problems in your relationship and if he doesn't have any enthusiasm to fix those problems and has more enthusiasm to just do whatever sexual thing he wants to do that's where you're going to run into an issue the second thing that i really want you uh, to think about is um and this is kind of like so much polyamory advice out there will will tell you like all these fears you're talking about you know i'm, I'm afraid of our life being destroyed i'm afraid of losing him i'm, I'm frustrated i'm afraid that he, if he stays and he doesn't do this he'll resent me and i'm afraid that you know so much polyamory advice like responds to that by saying get assurance get assurance from your partner and i do think assurance helps in some instances but i also think embracing your worst fears helps think about you know it, to face those fears what would happen if you broke up? What would happen if you did lose him? I know it sucks and it's really sad to think about, but like there might be a situation where that could happen. And I think that thinking about it, not, you know, panicky and emotiony is sort of like, oh, well, now I'm just going to put myself because I do this to myself as well. I'm like, okay, well, now let me emotionally feel like what it would be like to lose my partner. Let me experience those emotions because somehow that's going to hearted me for when it really happens you know don't do that um but just think about the physical realities of that what i think it's always good in situations where you feel like your relationship status is precarious especially if you have children to think about it's just to just to have a thought exercise of okay if this did happen what would i do what would i do physically what would my life look like i mean you say he is a good parent and you both are interested in parenting your child and you're both good parents so I wouldn't necessarily think that everything's going to be catastrophic. And as long as you both show up and continue to show up as parents, in my experience, I'm not a parent, but I am a child of people who did show up and didn't show up. Um, many more didn't than did, but <laughs> I can tell you what it's like to like have an adult say, oh, I'm going to be part of your life and then fuck off. It sucks. Um, so as long as you both are willing to show up, that part is kind of secure but other stuff might change and things change like the only thing constant is change so i've kind of found a good way to counteract my anxiety sometimes is to be really like thoughtful about okay what if this does happen and what am i going to do what are the plans because they they might happen you don't know and it doesn't help to sort of go oh it won't happen it won't happen it won't happen even just having that thought exercise help i think two things are kind of sticking out in terms of like other than his willingness to communicate if he is willing to communicate if he is being enthusiastic about it there are kind of two things that i think that you need to think about after that 
first thing is time management and like you already kind of mentioned this like planning time around your child is really really important he needs to think about and you need to think about if you do go ahead with this and you do open up your relationship and he does have this freedom what does that mean in a real time physical sense because i do think like some of your fears and your anxiety are coming from a really understandable place of like because you don't know what this means like opening up your relationship what does that look like if you've never thought about it and you've never thought okay that means that every friday you know, he's allowed, the evening is his, he can do whatever he like, that's a free day. You know, if you've never really thought and planned around it, then literally, you know, your brain has nothing to go on. So of course it's freaking out because you're, you're basically saying everything's going to change, but I have no idea how it's going to change. You know, so of course you're scared. I mean, it, it, I would sort of liken this to someone, you know, you, you're going to adopt a pet at a pet store, but you have no idea what kind of pet it is. So how do you prepare? You would be understandably kind of rattled. And this is a little bit worse because it deals with some of your like deep seated fears and, you know, all the things that society has told you about, like, you know, if someone loves you, they should have love only you and all this kinds of stuff. So it's even more complicated. So I think that if you both sit down maybe separately, maybe together, maybe with the therapist, or just have a think about what does this actually mean in real terms? What does he want in real terms? Is it, um, you know, think about your sexual health boundaries, think about, because, you know, your child comes first and should always come first. Like, I always think that regardless of what style of relationship anyone's in, in a relationship or out of a relationship, if they have a child, that child is dependent on them, that child has to come first. So, and I'm not saying he doesn't think that, but I'm just saying like in the whole mishmash of this fear and anxiety and, oh, I want to go and pursue things, uh, da, 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 there's no hard discussion about what that actually means in real, actual life terms. Apologies for the background noise. So yeah, I think that you need to, like, that's a good way to start. And that kind of grounding will help calm some of your anxiety. I think also it's something interesting to explore with the therapist and something to explore and I think you should with a therapist because I do think this is going to bring up some stuff that might be a little bit difficult for you. What about his, you know, he said that he had these one night stands. So what about his previous experiences didn't quote unquote satisfy him? And why is he convinced that it'll be different now? And I think that's really interesting. Like what you said about, you know, being confused that having sex with you um, or having good sexual experiences with you didn't automatically make him not want to do it with anybody else. It makes sense to me on a logical level. Like I don't really operate that way because I'm kind of more on the asexual spectrum. But I understand that because you sort of have been maybe romantically in that kind of situation where you're just sort of like, oh, I'm like really, really happy in this. I kind of want this really awesome connection with other people. I want to know what it's like with other people when it's this deep. And that's an understandable thing. I get that. But maybe that's why those other experiences didn't really like do it for him because they were kind of, I mean, I'm assuming, I don't know anything about like the, the nature of these one night stands and what went on, but maybe he, what he wants is polyamory rather than kind of swinging or hooking up with people. He wants another deep relationship with, with somebody else, which is okay. But I think for you to, not only for you to decide if this is really for you, but I think if, in order to like calm your anxiety, deciding what that really means physically. You know, what is your life going to look like? What is his ideal situation? And what is your ideal situation? I mean, you know, your ideal situation may be monogamy and that's kind of like where you may have to, if you want to stay with him and in a romantic relationship with him, that's where you may have to think about compromising in some way if you want to. But if he presents you with this idea of like, okay, you know, I want to spend every other weekend with someone else or, uh, you know, like, what does it look like? Because there's so many different ways to do polyamory. There's hierarchical, non-hierarchical. I mean, I, I'm going to like input my own little opinion here. And that is if you have a child, I think things should be hierarchical in that the child always comes first, but there are different ways that people do things. And I think it's really, really important to understand what that looks like for him to make sure as well that you're not stuck with the vast majority of the child care is another big thing. That would not be fair. And that should not be fucking happening. A bit passionate about that. You're really going to have to reiterate that because <laughs> it's not going to be really cool if you're like stuck with the kid all the time like even if you don't have another partner you can have time to yourself maybe he can watch the kid and you can go out and you can have you know meet up with your friends like not, not every everything has to be replaced with a partner type of bond if you're not really interested in other romantic relationships should do some stuff with your friends spend some time with yourself but make sure you get that equalness too like don't 
equalness look at me talking um don't sacrifice that because that's not that's going to create some serious resentment i think if you're i mean it creates resentment in people's lives who don't aren't dating other people when they're stuck with the vast majority of the child care um there's certain times when you may not be able to prevent that if you're breastfeeding and all that kind of stuff but you know make sure to get that in and i i think that you know you really need to think about is this is this really what you want and you may not be able to answer that question but i think what's helpful to think about is what are the benefits for you are you interested in another romantic relationship with a person are you interested in more sexual experiences are you interested in um you know spending more time doing your own thing like i i really don't actually like dating <laughs> i really hate it so I, when my domestic partners like, like out with other people i do stuff on my own like i do my own thing and i like it i like being on on my own it's not a it's not a bad thing it's nice nice time for myself is that something you like like you know can you go up to can you go to a hobby group like there's all kinds of stuff you can do with that free time so think about that like is it can you see this as an option for you is there something you can get out of this situation because what you don't want to end up with is agreeing to this because you're kind of in love with this person and you just go along with it because you don't want the relationship to end but you're getting nothing out of it he is going out and having all these new experiences it's really difficult for you to deal with and because it's difficult because it's new and because it's different and it deals with all those emotions of not feeling good enough and all those kinds of stuff you don't really have anything to balance it with if you don't have a benefit to you like I've experienced you know tons of shit where I felt like oh my god I feel you know my partner is interested in this other person I feel inadequate da 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 but then I kind of get to remind myself like okay yes you know but you chose this for this reason and that's why that's the benefit it brings to your life I think if you have no benefit you're really really gonna struggle because you, you know you're just gonna be like why am I doing this and why are you doing this if you don't see any benefit of it and another thing too is like I biggest kind of self-perpetuating or or what is it what is the word I'm thinking about um sabotage the biggest sabotage I think that people do to themselves when they're trying non-monogamy is thinking that anxiety and fear is a sign that they can't do it you're going to experience anxiety and fear especially like the first night if you decide to go with this and you're like i'm gonna try it the first night he spends with someone else is gonna suck and just just expect that <laughs> like don't think oh i'm gonna run a bubble bath and i'm gonna and it might it might not i would but i would just expect it to suck because <laughs> i do think that sometimes people think i'm experiencing so much fear and and worry uh, is it mean i'm not fit for it or i'm not i'm not up to the task because of polyamory is some kind of weird emotional obstacle course and it's not it's just that you're doing something new which your brain like you, all your life you've been told probably I'm, I'm guessing it could be wrong that you've you've been told that the way that people show that they love someone is by only being with them and that's the only way and that's a sign of love and being with other people is a sign that they're not interested in you so you've got all of this stuff in your head that's telling you that this is bad it's and it's not just going to go away just because you decided to do something different you know when you try something new you're scared you're going to be scared sometimes i think you have to go through the only way out is through and the only way to deal with it is to experience anxiety come out of the other end see that you survived it's so much better like when my domestic partner like me spends nights out i'm fine like i don't i don't even as long as I know, as long as it's not a like big shock or surprise, because and that has more to do with like me being on the autistic spectrum than anything. But you know, I'm I'm pretty fine. And the but the first like couple of nights, I was just like it, it's impossible for me to sleep. I did the same thing you did. I wasn't googling anything, but I was just sitting up all night going like, Ugh. and that's where having that therapist will really really help you because that's a person you can talk through all this. But that's if you want to do this. Um, but I'm just saying that as a preemptive thing because I do think when people start off, especially if they read a lot of what is in the mainstream now with non-monogamy and polyamory advice, they're gonna think you know oh just just you're just a a special star and that's why that your partner is with you because you, you no one else is like you and 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 they love you for you and i think that's very nice it's very very nice it's it's nice on a on a plaque with some flowers and you know maybe with some mood music and like oh in the background it's not very applicable to people in real life who have other little voice in their head that goes you suck and you're the worst and you're the evilest horriblest person ever and you're gonna die alone in a ditch that counteracts all of that like nice stuff and makes it really really hard and that's kind of the thing that people don't really talk about because 
I've mentioned this before in articles, there's a bit of a like crab bucket mentality. Because every time a polyamorous relationship doesn't work out, all the society around them will be like, well, this is a polyamorous open relationship, and those relationships don't work. So there's like all this pressure on you know, people in non-monogamous relationships to put up this good front and to sort of say, no, no, it does last and it is valid and it is da da da. Especially people who really want to fit that kind of assimilatory quote unquote norm, the people who want to to assimilate into the mainstream, they're gonna want to put up this PR front of like, no no no, yes we have jealousy. We dealt with it. We dealt with it. It's done. It's fine. We've put it away. We've packed it away. It's it's dealt with and nobody has it anymore. We're all fine. All smiles. No one no one has any problems here. Um and I get why people do that. But on the other hand I do think that people have struggles and it's okay to talk about. I don't want you to dive head first, especially with the Googling and, and read all this stuff and then try it out and experience these torrent of serious like scary emotions and then think that there's something wrong with you because it really isn't you're trying something new you're going to be scared so yeah that's my advice to sum up one introversion uh doesn't mean that you're you you're not communicating like it just means that you like to be alone to recharge that you need to establish i don't know from your letter maybe you know but you didn't mention it whether he is refusing to communicate or he is struggling to communicate. And that can be measured by his enthusiasm. He needs to be as enthusiastic about going out and trying all new things sexually as he is about fixing and addressing the issues. It sounds like he's quite good, like he's hugged you, he's, you know, he seems supportive, but I, I want to stress that there needs to be some equal enthusiasm there. He needs to like be super enthused about that. Think about, not panic about, <laughs> it's easier said than done, I know. Think about some of those, you know, your contingency plans, your plan Bs. Just think about them rationally. <laughs> I say this as if it's simple. But, you know, think about what, you, what are you going to physically do if this doesn't work out? Because I think that does help ground you a tiny bit. If you do decide to do this, you know, having talks with him about time management and what's going to go on equally can ground you. Because once you put things in a more physical, real sense, it can help you just be a little bit more calmer because right now everything's just sort of like I want to try sleeping with other women what does that mean for you what does it mean right now you have no idea so yeah once you sort out the communication thing is he going to do therapy if he doesn't mm, I don't predict good things if he doesn't want to go to therapy and he doesn't want to communicate and I, I think that you might need to think about that plan B a little bit more if that's the case if he does you need to think about time management. How is this going to physically work? What is what is his ideal non-monogamous situation? And, and how does that mix with you having a child who needs to be the primary focus and, and the most important thing in both of your lives, which I think it, that your child is, but I'm just sort of reiterating that. And then again, I think it's worth exploring these with a therapist because I think that right now exploring them just on your own might get a little bit difficult with feelings. But I think, what about his previous experiences didn't satisfy him? How is he, what different things is he looking for now? I think that would just be interesting to know because that as well, I think, will fit into if he hasn't thought about his ideal situation, then it'll kind of spur on what that ideal situation is. Is he going for more one night stands or is he looking for more of a relationship? Does he know? But working that through the therapist is really really helpful and last but not least think about yourself <laughs> not least at all what do you want out of this what are the benefits and so sorry about the siren noise even if you don't have any desire to pursue another romantic relationship what is the benefit that you get out of the situation because there are, might be a benefit even if you're not that interested in dating other people there might still be benefits since we're thinking about that and then yeah last but not least as well don't think that there's something wrong with you if you do try this and you get all sorts of huge scary feels. Um, that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're not ready. It doesn't mean, you know, you're not this weird emotional gladiator that articles make you think that you have to be in order to do polyamory. People get scared. Another thing to add about that is that even if you're quote unquote seasoned, sometimes when you're having a bad time or things are really, really stressful, you can still kind of have a big anxiety reaction because everything else is kind of putting pressure on you. All life's major stressors, like moving, um, having a new kid. I mean, you already know what having one kid is like. So imagine, you know, you're in that situation. Sometimes you'll be in a good situation, and so that news would be okay. Sometimes not so great, the news will be different. So don't think that there's anything wrong with you if you're afraid or if you feel fear. It's very, very normal to have these fears. And that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. You can't do it. Yeah, so that's basically my advice, and I really, really hope it helps and best of luck.
thank you for listening to episode 14 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. Um, yeah, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is, if you don't already know, if you become a patron of the podcast, then I basically, and you donate five dollars or more, it's dollars for some reason and it doesn't let you do other currencies, but if you put in your information it somehow all works out in a way that I'm not aware of. Um, if you donate five dollars or more a month, then I read your name at the end of the podcast. So I'm gonna do that for the five dollar patrons now. Thank you so much to Laura Boylan, Chris Alvary Jones, Lena Frenzy, and James Wartell. Those are the current five dollar patrons. Um at the time of recording, if you have donated five dollars or more since before this was recorded then you will be in the next podcast exciting exciting so yes if you would like to support the podcast and the columns please become a patron you can go to patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix um and yeah even one dollar a month is super awesome and you get all of the columns in the podcast uh, a few days early before everyone else does and there's other fiction bits that i write that you also get um so yeah please uh send your letters if you have any of them uh to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll be in the podcast or the column anonymously and of course if you want to read the columns you can go to medium.com forward slash Oh, wait, no, actually, you can go to nominogmehelp.com and it will send you to the medium col- column. So I don't have to talk about hyphens all the time, which is exciting. Um, you can get the newsletter at tinyletter.com forward slash nominogmehelp. Um, and that will send you the columns and the podcasts a day, two days before they go live. And you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash nonmonogamyhelp. Right. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in a week or a week after next. Yes. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com and the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>